Okay guys, today we're gonna talk phone numbers and returned mail. Another question I get a lot when people start marketing in real estate investing. My name's April Crosley. I'm a real estate investor based out of Berks County, Pennsylvania. I flip houses, I do wholesaling, I own small multifamily properties, a mobile home park, I'm involved in syndications, and I do a little bit of private lending. I am actually in charge of the marketing in our flip business, so I can tell you how I handle phone calls and returned mail. I also live in a market in the Northeast, so for those of you that aren't from the Northeast, I can tell you just from traveling all over the United States in my RV for the past year, that the Northeast isn't the friendliest area in the United States. It's pretty far from being the friendliest area. <laughs> so when you send postcards and mail to sellers, for some reason they get really angry about mail. Not sure why. We've had people call and swear at us and call us like super foul things that I would never repeat and threaten us and tell us that they're going to like burn our house down and find out where we live all over a piece of mail because I'm sure getting a postcard or a letter you don't want in your mailbox really is like super distressing. I mean, I can only imagine. It's not like junk mail doesn't come every day. So people get pretty upset in the Northeast. As opposed to, we actually do marketing in a bunch of different markets, and some of those markets are down south. And when we market down south, not all the time, but sometimes, people will call us and actually apologize that they don't wanna sell their house right now, but they're gonna think really hard about anyone they know that might wanna sell, and then they'll call us back if they know anyone. They're like very apologetic. So in the Northeast, we have to be a little protective of ourselves and our personal information being out there when we're doing marketing in our real estate business. So some people will say, can I put my personal phone number and my regular house address on my mailings for return mail? And my answer 99.9% .9 of the time will be no, do not do that, okay? I would never do it. I don't even put my name on my mail piece, okay? My picture sometimes, but never my name, but there's always a name on the mail piece. So I'll explain that in a second. So there's different phone numbers that you can use so that you don't have to use your personal cell phone number. One is Google Voice. Some people love Google Voice numbers. If you have a Gmail, it's super easy to set up Google Voice. If you're marketing in a different market, than where you live, you can get a Google Voice number that is local to the area code of the market that you're doing your marketing in. So it looks like you're local, which is super important. You don't wanna be using a Pennsylvania phone number if you're marketing in Tennessee or a Pennsylvania phone number if you're marketing in Maine. Make sure you're using an area code that's local. So Google Voice is your first option. Call Rail is your second option. I actually use both of these. I have a Google Voice number for a mobile home park that we own in Tennessee so that I'm not living there yet, maybe someday, but right now I want the number to be local for the residents that live in the park. So if they need to get a hold of me, they call my Google Voice number, which is a Tennessee number. Call Rail is what I use for all of my mail in my real estate investing business. In call rail, you create what are known as like tracking numbers, okay? So it's an app on your phone, you can also access it on the computer to create all your numbers. So we will mail to different lists. So say you mail to an equity list, a probate list, and a niche list, like drive for dollars or inherited, something like that. Every list gets a different call rail number, okay? So it'll have a local area code, so it might be like 610-463-0965, and then the niche list might be 610-499-2674, doesn't matter, you get the point. Different phone number, same area code for different lists. This way, when the calls come in, I can track how many calls I'm getting from each mailing. So what list is working and what list 
isn't working. If I'm getting a lot of calls from the niche list phone number, then I know the niche list mailer is working and people call off that. If I'm getting a, not a lot of calls from the equity number, then I know why am I continuing to mail this equity list if it's not working? The call rail number will ring your phone directly, or if you have an acquisitions manager, you can set it up to ring the acquisitions manager phone. What I love about call rail is you can set up specific what we call call flows and voicemails for each number. So when a seller calls that number, they're not necessarily gonna get the voicemail that's on your cell phone. You're gonna set up a specific voicemail just for that tracking number. So say you sent out a niche list mailing. For your niche list phone number, you could set up a voicemail that says, hey, you've reached Berks County House Buyers. Thanks for giving me a call. I actually drove past this house the other day and thought you might be interested in selling. So people would be like, you drove past and thought I might be interested. So our drive for dollars list is houses that look like junk, like they need work, okay? That intrigues them to speak with you. The other thing we do is set up what we call call flows because we send out about 6,000 mailings a week. It's a lot of phone calls that come in and we don't want our acquisitions people, or if you're doing it yourself, you don't want yourself to be screamed at if you're in an area like I am because people are angry because it's cold and they don't see the sun a lot. <laughs> you don't want to get screamed at just because someone wants to come off your mailing list. So what we do is we set up a call flow. So in call rail, you can have it ring for 15 seconds and then you can have an automated system pick up that'll say press one if you want to be removed from our mailing list. Press two if you want to speak to a home buying specialist. So if they press one, it'll automatically kick them over to a voicemail where they can leave their name and address and be removed from the mailing list. If they press two, then it rings my acquisitions manager's phone. So what I'm doing is protecting my acquisitions manager from getting screamed at and from having to talk to people that just wanna come off the mailing list. That's a waste of their time and a waste of their energy. And you will learn the more calls you get and the more mailing you do, your acquisitions manager's energy is like super important to protect. It doesn't matter who you are, you can only take so many angry seller calls a day till you start feeling like really low and angry yourself, <laughs> okay? So you want to minimize the number of calls that are going to your acquisitions manager if they're not necessary. So I love CallRail because you can track, you can set up different voicemails and you can set up different call flows. So I highly recommend CallRail. With either of these, the seller you're mailing to doesn't know your phone number, okay? So it's protecting your personal phone number, which is important. And you can also label the numbers in CallRail. So like when it, if it rings your cell phone, it will ring my cell phone and say niche list mailing. So I know the call's coming from a mailing. So I know whether I should pick up, if it's like my mom or my sister, or it's a mail piece, someone from a mail piece calling me. So you can label that in call rail, which is really nice. You're not just picking up any number that calls, okay? Then people always ask me, what do I use for return mail? A PO box, a UPS box, or my personal address? So I already told you in my area, people are super angry. They threaten to burn down my house. So I do not use my personal address. I actually use a UPS box, and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't like PO box, okay? First, you should always be using a local return mail address. There's a lot of sellers that will not talk to people who are not local. Even if you're not local, get a local return mail address and someone to check your returned mail for you, okay? I don't like a P.O. box because it just is too generic. It'll be like P.O. box 1234 Reading PA 19608. When I get a UPS box, it'll say 2669 Shillington Road, Suite 136, Sinking Spring, Spring PA 19608. So it's giving me a suite number. So it looks like an office. Recently, we had a seller that got one of our postcards in the mail. He was super angry and kept telling me how he's coming to 2669 Shillington Road in Sinking Spring to burn my office down. And I was like, 
okay, <laughs> well, I guess when he gets there, he'll figure out it's a UPS store. It is not an office suite, but the address makes it look like you have an office suite, which is really nice and makes people think, oh, they're local, they have an office locally, just automatically builds more trust than a generic PO box, okay? On my mailings, I also do not use my name. So if you, any of you get my mailing in the mail, a friend of mine called me the other day and said, April, I got a postcard in the mail, your picture's on it, but some lady named Denise is using your picture on her mail piece. And I'm like, no, that's my mail piece with my picture, but the name is Denise. So people will call in and ask for Denise. And I just say, Denise is on vacation today. How can I help you? Denise is on a permanent vacation. She's always on vacation or she's always out of the office or she's always sick. And I know this probably will not come as a shocker, but we do have sellers that call in and say, well, have Denise call me when she gets back because the card is from Denise. So I want to talk to Denise. So we hang up and then I call back the next day and I say I'm Denise and then they talk to me like whatever makes them feel better but I don't use my personal name on my mailers. A lot of people don't even want to use their picture. So I sometimes use my picture, sometimes I have no picture. We just do like a Google street view of the house. It really depends like how safe you feel using your picture and what preferences you have. But that is how I handle all of my calls and all of my returned mail. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions about marketing, drop them below so I can get them answered. Click like and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. You can learn more about us by checking out our website, aprilcrosley.us following us on Instagram at April Crosley or join our group on Facebook, RVREI.